I was thinking when I was playing with um, with Gary and uh, Warren and Kelly today, what goes into the making of a Hall of Famer from you know the playing point of view. Uh, and uh, I realized that you know the ability to you know hit all kinds of different shots, to be persistent, to have a lot of confidence in yourself, all all, all these qualities. But I think um, obviously Mike Weir has always demonstrated those qualities. But uh, there's another as there are other aspects to Mike as well that have made him worthy of being in the uh, Ontario Golf Hall of Fame and the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame and also to having the Order of Canada. So I thought I would like to talk, I'd talk for a few minutes about some of those. I'll start with the golf part. Um, and when I first became aware of, of Mike, now I should preface it by saying that um, I don't always make the right predictions about players. I'm the same guy, the same writer who once wrote that the way Greg Norman was playing, he was a sure thing to win the Masters one year and then he missed the cut flat that year. So, um, but with Mike, uh, I remember when I first came across him when he was, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, you saw something special in him. And then when I saw him at a, at a pro tournament, I think it was at the Mandarin here in Toronto, and, uh, or near Toronto, and I remember that, uh, I think it was on the ninth hole of this tournament, um, it might have been the Canadian PGA, I'm not sure. But anyway, he, uh, he hit his ball, his drive, into kind of an iffy spot. And he thought that he should get a free drop. The um, official in the tournament did not give Mike the drop. And Mike just kind of glared at him as if to say, are you kidding me? You're not going to give me a drop here? And the hazard wasn't really marked that well. Anyway, I remember Mike had kind of an uphill, side hill lie kind of like this with about 180 yards to the green. And uh, he choked way down, way down on his club. And he took what looked to me like a five wood with a three quarter swing and he hit it way up in the air. The green was elevated and he hit it about 12 feet from the hole. He kind of looked at the guy, didn't say a word, and he went up there and he made the putt for par. So I thought to myself, this young Mike Weir has some, something special. And I remember writing a column in the Globe and my last paragraph was that someday you're going to see Mike Weir in the last group of PGA Tour events with the likes of the best players in the world. And of course, in the last 15 years or so, uh, we've seen that. Um, and Mike has continued to justify that kind of um, faith in him over the years. Uh, Any time that he's been issued a challenge in golf, uh, he's responded to it. Even if he didn't win, it's not like he went into a tournament saying, I can't win. There are so many examples of this. I remember a, a third round at the Masters many years ago, long before he won, when it was a bitterly cold day at Augusta. The wind was howling, it was really rough out there. And I remember the back nine uh, in this round, the greens were like this floor here. You couldn't keep the ball on the green mark, like Garrett Mike, like Gary Cowan said. He had all kinds of different shots. Whatever it took, he was gonna get the ball around the green. And I think he shot one or two under par that back nine that day, when the average score, I think, was two or three over. And I thought, again, there's something special about Mike and I wasn't even thinking about his ball striking, I was thinking about his just his, his determination as, and his persistence, words I know that everybody has used about Mike over the years, but to see them firsthand I, you know, was really why I like to write about the game, to see that kind of play, that kind of determination. Then there was another tournament uh, in Atlanta one year, and it was the week before the Masters, and uh, play was suspended, they had to play two rounds the last day, and Mike was, had just made the cut really, it was 10 shots off the lead, and it was again, uh, the weather changed, it was about 45, 50 degrees with a howling wind, and I just knew that he would play well because he just wanted, he had 36 holes where everybody else was going to be kind of complaining about the weather, but he was just going to relish the challenge, and he went out there, and I think he finished second in that tournament, he made up eight or nine of those shots, and I believe he finished second to Scotty McCarron that tournament, so all of those qualities showed me that he had something special. And then, of course, there was the uh, 99 PGA Championship when um, I remember I was, uh, I didn't go to that tournament and uh, it was Saturday and I was driving up to Stratford with my wife to go to a play out there. And I heard that uh, obviously that, that Mike had, uh, was right there in contention, was tied with Tiger for the last round. So she said, uh, she said, I think you better get yourself down there. So we went to Stratford, turned right around, came back to Toronto, booked the flight and I went down there on Sunday. Uh, when Mike was playing with Tiger. Not a lot of people in the States knew much about Mike Weir then. Um, unfortunately, it's the habit of television um, analysts quite often not to pay attention to players until they've really done something. And when I walked into the press room, I mean, it was nobody was really giving Mike much of a chance. 
And then he went out there and he was out of his element, there's no doubt about it. He was a young player on the tour. Um, he's been the first to admit that he wasn't uh, that capable of handling all of the crowds out there. Not so much playing against Tiger or with Tiger, that wasn't it, but when, uh, when Tiger was finished, the crowds would disperse and it was tough on Mike. And I remember Rich was there and there was a lot of drinking going on in Chicago there and people were heckling Mike, really. They were, they were, you know, down the last few holes when clearly Mike was, you know, nowhere near the lead uh, anymore. Um, they were making fun of him, they were mocking him, saying, uh, come on, Mike, you can still do it, that sort of a thing. And he just kept his head down, kept playing, and he shot 80 that last round and finished 10th. And I remember when he came off the green, I was there, and um, Bricia, his wife, was there with uh, the first child, the first daughter, and I remember Mike just, you know, just looked at, at the media, the few of us who were there, and said, you know what, I'm going to learn from this, it's okay. I mean, I shot 80 with Tiger Woods, doesn't matter. I mean, and it was clear, a lot of people, right at that moment, wrote off Mike Weir. They thought, he shot 80 playing against the best player in the game, and he's got no chance. But you could just see in Mike's eyes that he was going to take this as a learning experience. It wasn't a failure, it was just something he was going to learn from. And then, of course, three weeks later, he came back and he won the Air Canada Championship, shooting 64-64 on the weekend in Vancouver. And it was very obvious that whatever challenge Mike faced, he was going to respond to it. He wasn't going to back off. And